Okay, my friends. Hey, everyone. Jody Breckbill, Stampin' Queen here. So sorry, my friends. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying, but um, I have high hopes. Hopefully, when I have some more software that I need to get taken care of, and hopefully that will allow me to uh, do some broadcasting uh, with streaming. I'm really excited about it, but an iPad just wasn't cutting it this morning. So thanks so much. I'm sorry I'm late, um, but here we are ready for Wow Wednesday. So I am super excited to share some more ladybug cards with you guys so if you were on my zoom class last weekend we did our zoom class and bingo and we played with the ladybugs and i have some more cool things i want to share with you guys today uh, featuring uh, those little ladies so let's see they are on page 20 of the jj mini catalog and it is a bundle so there is a stamp and a punch that go with these ladybugs and they are just super adorable so i have lots to share with you guys today especially with um wow class so wow class is always the last wednesday of every month it is right here live 10 a.m and it is some wow projects some things that maybe are some fun folds a little bit different and i have a couple tips i want to share but first i want to make sure you guys do know about a special that is coming up and that is the all together collection that's going to start february 1st unless you're a demonstrator you are able to get some items ahead of time and we are going to um uh, I'll launch this on the 1st of February. Many items are wow supplies last, but uh, the blends are going to stay in the big catalog. So I wanted to show the bundle. We have the Here Together bundle, and then of course it's got a set of dies in there. Um, just a quick note, there's some extra hearts in here. They are not part of this. Uh, there's these three stitched hearts are not part of this, but I'm sending this kit or this uh, bundle over to a friend and I, I want her to do some die cutting with those. So you do get one heart, you get You Matter here for you, and then you get your two uh, hands that you'll be able to cut out. And then we have some great sentiments with this one, just sh celebrating love and kindness and togetherness. Then we've got a pack of six by six designer series paper. And this one, it's a, it's a regular stack. I only have the, the uh, samples pulled out for you. Totally, or the patterns, I'm sorry. Totally black and white, love it and black and white on both sides, right? So this is while supplies last as well. Flip that over and there is your other side. And it's got some great uh, pages for coloring, especially using some of those new blends. Hello friends, thanks so much for coming on. Sorry I am late this morning. It's a little bit messy as I'm trying to work with some streaming software and I just could not get it to do what I wanted. So yes, black and white with a pop of color. You know it, Tamara. Then of course, we've got those blends. Okay, so where there's five sets of blends. Um, they really don't have names because they don't coordinate with a Stampin' Up! color. So you will find um, that they're like medium, medium light, medium dark, dark, um, light, light, dark, medium dark. So they don't really have names, they just have numbers but they do come in packs of two, and um, they just are perfect for everything that you might need. And I'm gonna play with these a little bit, and then I'll have some projects to share with you, maybe, maybe next week, I'm not sure. Next week, we're trying to go on vacation. So my Florida friends, please get Florida warm. It's been a little chilly down there, you guys. And so that's where we're trying to head because we are seeking some warmth. But it sounds like Florida's a little bit chilly. So warm it up, kids. All righty. So remember, those blends, they're going to be in the next uh, annual catalog. They are carrying over. All right. Let's talk about Prize Patrol. And then uh, we will get going with some WOW projects. All right, so last week, Prize Patrol was a mini stack of the Subtles Designer Series paper, the six by six. And 
the winner winner chicken dinner. I haven't seen her come on yet, but it is Doreen Nelson. So Doreen, you are the lucky winner. Um, she might not be awake yet. She's out in Idaho. She might be taking a nap still this morning. So Doreen, I will pop that in the mail for you. So congratulations. And then this is prize patrol for this week. I had an extra uh, brick and mortar uh, embossing folder and so all you need to do is a like love comment or sprinkle my video and then come back next week to see if you were the lucky winner so oh kathy it's chilly this week warm up next week okay perfect 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 warm up next week that's what i want to hear all right my loves let's go ahead and get started with our ladybugs i gotta get some things together here so i'm ready to go Okay, so I pulled in the Island Vibes, and this is a celebration item. So during celebration till the end of February, you're able to get this one free with a $50 purchase. And today, we're going to kind of play around with our Stamparatus. So it's been a while since I've had the Stamparatus out, but we are going to play with it today and see if I can remember how I did this before. We are going to do a mirror image technique using our silicone mat, okay? So let's grab, I need that piece right there. And a piece of white. And ahead of time, I did my ladybugs. So I've got my three ladybugs here. I stamped them ahead, punched out their wings, so they're ready to go. And then the trick to this, all right, I'm left-handed, so I may need to do this a little bit different than what most people do. So I am going to use my Stamparatus grid here, and I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna use a corner, okay? So I need to have a corner, pick any corner, it does not matter, but I have my paper lined up right here. That's my visual, that's very important. And then what I'm gonna do is just put my magnet along this grid line right here. So it's kind of, like it kind of creates a wedge. Then I'm gonna attach this magnet down, so that's gonna hold my paper in place and I am going to put my uh, fern stamp, I think these are ferns, down here in the corner, and I kind of want them, I kind of want them coming off my page so that I, do, or off my cardstock, so I don't see that line right there, okay? So, stay where you are, back in the corner. Get that lined up where it needs to go. And then I'm going to close my Stamparatus and now my stamp is on my clear plate, right? So I've got that all lined up. I'm gonna grab some green ink. And I'm going with garden green. Now this is not my idea. Some amazing demonstrator came up with this mirror image. So I'm going to ink that up. And then we'll close our Stamparatus and we will have those ferns down in the bottom corner. So now you'll see they're kind of going this way. Now, if I went ahead and stamped them again, the, all the ferns would be going the same way, but I want them to go left and I want them to go right. So, there we are. Now what the next step is, I'm gonna take these guys off. This is gonna come off and our silicone mat, oh, Breck Bill, you moved your important magnets. All right, let's have a do-over, shall we? Because I moved that magnet that, I, that was my visual. So can I just do it on this side? I can't, I think this was correct, but always better to do it again. So do as I do, not, or do as I say, not as I do, right? Part 
two. Let's try it again. Love live videos, right? I know you guys enjoy watching me mess up too. Yeah, I mess up just like everybody else. We have to learn from our mistakes. How about it? All right, part two. Nope, it must have been up. It must have been up one more. Let's try this side. Nope, how about down one? All right, now I think we're cooking. Okay, there we go. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm totally human. And I make these, like I made these like maybe a month ago. So I have to get my rememberer out so that I can remember how I did this for you guys. All right, there we go, right? Plant, so this stays here, right? That's really important. We need that to stay here. We're gonna take this one off. Now I have to remember my good side versus my bad side. This is the good side. Then I'm gonna put my uh, silicone mat here. And it is important to know that your silicone mat is clean because it kind of picks up some gunk, right? It just kind of gets um, fuzz and dog hair and whatever else from the environment. So make sure your silicone mat is clean. Then I inked that up again and I'm actually going to stamp my silicone mat. There we are. Now I'm gonna take my paper. This is my good side. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put it back and line it up carefully with the silicone mat so I've got that edge to edge and the edge up here. And now I can ink this up again. No, it doesn't, well, I don't need to ink that up. Back that up, you don't need to ink it up. What you need to do is just smash it down because I don't need to have the ink on the back side, but it does, it's not a big deal, okay? So now we're gonna say a little prayer. Come on, please let this work, Jody's live. She needs this to be working. And we should have ferns going two different ways. And we do. Ferns going to the left, ferns going to the right. Woo! Okay. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. You can go back and rewatch this if you weren't quite sure exactly what I did. But basically, you're making, you're going to ink up your. Uh, silicone mat, right? And the key is that you need to have your paper and your mat lining up on the same, same area. Yes. Woo. Okay. It worked. I'm going to give you another trick. If you guys have not gotten your Stamparatus out lately or your Stamparati, um, get it back out again. It's such an amazing tool. And uh, what I do with these magnets, this is just painter's tape or masking tape. I make myself little handles that's wrapped on there a couple times because it's a lot easier for me to pick up those magnets rather than to try to get my fingernails underneath there. So that's why I have those. They're just little tabs for my magnets. Always make sure your magnets are coming from the back, which is where there's a storage well. Bring it from the back and put it right onto your Stamparatus. Don't set them off to the side. They are so very strong and they will attract to anything metal. You have to be careful that around your phone, around your computers, iPads, when you're using those magnets. Pacemakers, right? These are crazy strong. Okay, so we are gonna bring the Stamparatus back again, but right now we just did that mirror image technique using our silicone mat. All right, I'm hoping that made sense for you guys. And uh, should you have any questions, just give me a shout. So let's go ahead and put our card back together. We've got some basic black here, and that's just regular card base, fold that in half. There we are, and then our white is going to go right over top, and I have a very, very thin line. It is an eighth of an inch is my border. You can do quarter inches, you can do half inches, whatever floats your boat. There we are, and we're gonna grab all those bugs, and I'm gonna show you a couple little tricks here for these girls. I'm gonna assume they're girls, right? Ladybugs. 
So did you guys see my fun fact? I was posting some ladybug fun facts and um, ladybugs actually bleed from their knees whenever they are threatened. And so they, they admit this goo from their knees, which is kind of stinky and foul tasting. So birds and other predators or whatever that um, might eat them will run away. So there's a ladybug fun fact for you guys. So I'm gonna take my wings and I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm just gonna give them a little tiny curl. Now this, this won't really help if, <laughs> if um, you are putting it in the mail because it's just going to get smashed. I know, Debbie, I sometimes love the eighth inch mats. I'm gonna do them while I still can see them. And then when my eyes are that bad, I'm gonna have to switch back over to the quarter and the half inch. So I'm gonna use uh, just glue dots, just get my old snot dots out here, and I'm gonna add her wings onto her body. But see how she looks now, like she's gonna take some flight. All right, so my next fun fact, I did post this on my, um, my Facebook group was that a ladybug might eat up to 5,000 aphids in its lifetime. That's a lot. So they are very, very helpful little bugs. Oh, my dog is having a bad dream or maybe a good dream. I don't know. He's laying here in this studio crying. Maybe it's a good dream. Uh-oh, there we are. I was looking for my Pop-Tarts. So now I'm just gonna pop dot these kids on my, on my card. And before I, put, before I go too far, let's get our sentiment on here, right, shall we? So I'm gonna just stick with my sentiments that come right from, right from the stamp set. And I'm gonna do, you can bug me anytime. There we go. And now we can finish our little bugs with some pop dots. There we are. So there's card number one. That's our reverse image technique or mirror image technique. Focusing on that um, that Stamparatus, and I'm gonna get it back out again because I do wanna show you another idea using it. Okay, so there we go. Now it's a little bland, right? It is a little bland. So let's get some bling out. Everything's better with bling. So let's just, I've got the matte black dots. So let's just put a couple little dots. We're just gonna sprinkle those on the card, wherever they fall. There we go, a little sprinkle of dots. So that is our mirror image. Then on this one, I added just a little B. So I didn't do the dots, but I just put a little B. He's landing on the, on the um, ferns. So there we go. Alrighty, next up, let's see what do we want to do. All right, let's do a window card here. And do I have ink on my fingers? That's important to get rid of ink on my fingers. I am going to use Poppy Parade white and then I have, this is, this is a piece of the designer series paper that is the um, sunshine and rainbows. So it's the sunshine, sunshine pattern. And don't forget guys, when this is over, hop back to the description of the video and you can scroll down and you will find information for my mailing list. So, so you want to make sure you get on my mailing list because everybody on my mailing list gets information and special offers first. Uh, that way you're always in the know. And then you can scroll down and you will see the dimensions for the projects. So you'll see at what size to cut and um, where to score and all that good stuff. 
So we have our piece of Poppy Parade. And we are going to score that in half. We could fold it in half, but uh, just standard card base, fold in half. Then we have a piece of basic white. And that basic white is should be five and a quarter by eight. Yep. And we are going to score at two inches and four inches. Okay. Um, so we got that correct. Yep. Okay, that's all we need for scoring. So the next step is we're going to fold our poppy piece in half. This is our card base. And I'm going to attach this piece of designer series paper to the front. Now we need to cut a hole through here. We're going to have a window cut through here. And I want the pieces, I want the designer paper and I want the poppy piece. I don't want them stuck together. So I'm going to kind of just adhere, put my adhesive not really in the center there. So that way I can use it for for this project as well. I got something else in mind for that. Here we are. So I, I don't have any adhesive right there. So the next step is to take my layering circle and I am going to cut a hole. So that's gonna be my window. And my, rather than get everything out and I have limited space, I'm gonna just turn around here and cut that real quick. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Hold please. All right, so here's what we got. There's our circle, we're done with that one. Then out should pop these two circles. So there's our designer paper, I can use that for something else. Here is my poppy circle and I'm gonna use that for my card. Now, do I have everything? Okay, I have my ladybugs there. I did go ahead and stamp and punch them ahead of time. I have another circle I did. These are all layering circles. So I'm gonna glue this one to the red or the poppy because that's what our ladybug is gonna land on. She's gonna be framed with the circle. There we are. So let's add our ladybug wings. I love my glue dots. I love my snot dots for this. It just makes it so much quicker. All right, so while we're doing this, we should have another ladybug fun fact. So, first fun fact, ladybug is not a bug, it is a beetle. You guys probably already knew that. But, why is it called a ladybug? This was, this was really cool, I read this this morning. Um, ladybugs, uh, the lady refers to the Virgin Mary. And according to legend, during the Middle Ages, many of the crops in Europe were pegged, plagued by pests. I'm still learning how to do this Invisalign, guys. It's, I'm two weeks in, and I just, I'm still learning how to speak properly with these plastic things in my mouth. All right, so um, the crops just had lots and lots of pests, and of course, the farmers began to pray to Virgin Mary, and soon they started to see ladybugs coming in and the ladybugs were eating some of the pests on their crops and their crops were miraculously saved. So that's how ladybug got its name lady referred to the Virgin Mary. So how, much, how cool is that? That was, I thought that was really interesting. Um, and they also said, what does it say here? Um, the seven spotted ladybug is believed to be the first, to, is believed to be first name for Virgin Mary. The red color represents her cloak 
and the black spots represent her sorrow. That's German legend. So European legend was that the farmers prayed to the Virgin Mary and got the got ladybugs to come and save their crops. Um, Germany says it refers to um, Virgin Mary because of her red and black. So very interesting. How about it? All right, let's move on. We got some more work to do. I'm getting chatty and we have business to attend to. All righty. So I've got my circle there and my little bug, she's gonna hang out right here. Now you'll see how that circle is just gonna fit right through that window. So you can kind of see where we're going with this. All righty. Now our next step is to assemble our card. <clears throat> So it's gonna go this way. This is gonna be the inside of our card. We're gonna fold, fold this way. And then we're gonna fold back. Do I have black on my hands? What is happening? I'm getting fingerprints, I don't like that. All right, I wanna make sure I'm straight here because I don't feel like, yeah. Oh, I bet I have it on my table. I need to wipe my table. This table sees a lot of use. Okay, so there we go. Can we kind of see how this is almost gonna be like an accordion? Now, let's add some adhesive to the back. And now this can come right in the middle of our card. There we are. And I'm gonna take this little extra piece and it's gonna just hang out right there. So we'll go ahead and attach that. Oh, I love that. I love that ladybug tattoo, Lori. That's cool. So your ladybug has a story. All right, so there we go. You see how that's gonna open? and pull open like that. Now, um, I could I could go ahead and stamp a little ladybug down in here, but for time's sake, you can do all your decoration, right? You guys got how that's gonna work. So let's go ahead and attach our ladybug here. And I am, I am gonna be cautious where that adhesive goes, right? I don't wanna glue the whole thing down or else it's going, oh, I got fuzz fuzz from my circle. I don't want to glue that whole circle down because it will stick to our card. We only want to have adhesive right there. And I'm going to have her kind of be a little bit, a little bit crooked. So I'm just going to run some adhesive strip, write down some seal right in there. And then I'll attach her right through that window. Then we open it up and there we are, our little peekaboo window. So let's finish her off. I have a scrap piece here and I'm gonna grab, oh, maybe I'm not. I want the, um, yeah, I want the flower. Somebody I think asked if this flower works with the uh, daisy punch and not exactly you could punch it but it is not designed to be an exact fit on that one do i have i'm gonna have to just improvise here i don't have enough blocks there we are so i'm gonna stamp with uh, what do I have? What is this one? Mango Melody. Now it matches the designer series paper. There we are. Now I am going to fussy cut because like I said, it doesn't match exactly. And so it's, it's a little bit smaller. Um, you're going to lose some of the, some of the leaf. That's why I didn't, um, why I didn't use the punch. I 
actually, I'm going to double check to make sure I'm not lying to you. Maybe it does match the punch, but I, I'm almost positive it's not exact. No, not exact. These, these petals are a little thicker. That's what I was getting at. So, sing yourself a little tune while I fussy cut this flower. I should have had this done ahead of time. But I was working on some other things, trying to get ready to head out of town for a little bit. Hopefully, I'll still be able to come on with you guys and visit from wherever we might land. Hello, friends who are just coming on. This is WOW class you guys are joining, and this is just a stepped up class with some different techniques. So I do that the last Wednesday of every month. So hopefully you guys enjoy WOW class. Normally, I'm a very simple stamper. I like to do quick and easy cards, but once a month, I get a little crazy and we do some WOW projects. So right now we're doing a peekaboo window card and then you can go back and catch the replay anytime. Um, dimensions will always be in the description of the video too, so you can catch them there. So let's do our sentiment. We're gonna still keep with this. You can bug me anytime. And I did this ahead of time with stitched rectangle dies. I know where it's coming from. My lid is really dirty. Can't have that. All right, so let's add this with some dimensionals. I wanna get my bitty dimensionals out. They are perfect for these little rectangles. So just a couple little baby dimensionals. Then ahead of time, look at this little baby star. How cute is that? This is from the Whirly Bird one, uh, or the Give It a Whirl, sorry. I have, I have nicknames for a lot, of, a lot of our product. So I cut that out with Poppy Parade, and I just am gonna stick that right in the center of that flower. So we'll add our sentiment here. And then we'll attach our flower on top of that with a pop dot. And there we go, our window. Now one thing you could also do, it, it, do, it doesn't wanna stay down because it's got that, um, that fold in the middle, is you could just take a piece of your baker's twine and just, you could always make a belly band, you could totally do that and then you would just slide your belly band off or just grab yourself a piece of twine and um, tie yourself a knot here, a little bow to hold that shut. Now that's a really awful looking bow, but I could fuss around with that later and make it pretty. All right, so there we go. So everybody ready to do one more project? One more project. All righty, so. Here's an interesting ladybug fun fact. Ladybugs may lay both fertile and infertile eggs on purpose. And the reason they do that is so when the fertile eggs hatch, they can eat the infertile eggs. What? How smart are these little bugs? That's just crazy. Ladybugs, who knew all this information? Okay, now we have got, please tell me, Jody. please tell me you wrote your dimensions down. I hope you did. All right, we're going to do an easel card, a little bit of a different easel. Got Poppy Parade again, and let me grab my score plate. Four and a quarter by 11 on this piece. This is our final one, so hang in there, kids. I am so disappointed my streaming did not work today. That really bothers me. All right, so now we are going to do five and a half and six and three quarter. 
So this is start for a storybook fold, right? Because we always have our storybook or book binding, right? One of my favorite folds, I love that. So we did five and a half, six and three quarter. Then what we're going to do is an angle right here because we're gonna do a little bit of a take on this with an easel card. So we wanna do an angle and you can use your paper trimmer, that works just fine. I love my Simply Scored and I actually have a Sharpie line that I use all the time. So I'm just gonna do that by placing my edge here in that Sharpie line and that score, oops, let's scoot up a little. So we got here, and then I'm gonna go right down to here. Okay, so we're gonna make those meet, and that's why that Sharpie mark is important because it, because it just it's so I can see that I'm in the right track. There we go, we're just gonna make a little, oh, I totally will keep trying, Betty, absolutely. My tech girl is gonna help me out, I'm sure. Um, I think the problem is the iPad. So I'm waiting on my stand for my uh, computer. All right, so here we are. Let's do our bone folder so that these are nice and crisp. Where did I put it? There we are. Then this one's gonna fold back, so I want that to be nice and crisp. And then this one is going to fold like that. So let's make that one nice and crisp. There we are. Okay, so that's kind of how our card is going to go. But we need to put some pieces together first. So I've got a piece of basic white and I need to stamp that. So let me find, I need Poppy Parade. And I need the flower stamps, those three little flowers. We're gonna use those. So where'd my poppy parading go? Over here. And I want a piece of scrap paper, so I don't wanna stamp on my table. Here we go, now we're rolling, now we're rolling. All right, and what I'm gonna do is just some poppy flowers, just kind of cascading down the front of this project. There we are. Now, in between, I've got some Daffodil Delight and I've got these itty bitty little um, circles. And I'm just gonna fill those in. They're very light, but they just kind of help pull in the yellow. There we are. Now, I'm gonna run this through an embossing folder. So, again, I don't wanna bring everything over. I'm gonna use the Tasteful Textiles, I believe this one's called, and I'm gonna run this through. It's just gonna give a little bit of a subtle background. So, hold please. There we are, isn't that cool? Just needed a little, a little bit of something. So let's attach that to a piece of basic black. And this is actually going to be our card front. I've got just a little bit of black show in there because I know Debbie loves when I do that. Oh, slow your roll. All right, I almost, almost went crazy. Whoo, okay, because we do need to be careful when we're putting adhesive on this one. Very, very important to make it an easel card. I almost just automatically started swiping the adhesive all over this. We can only have adhesive here, okay, in this corner right there. 
So I'm actually going to put the adhesive on that corner. Now, we're good. That was almost a big uh-oh. Another do as I say, not as I do. All right, so see how that's gonna pop up? We need that piece to be free back there. This is a Mary Dethridge card. She's pretty awesome. I really, really enjoy um, what she creates. And so I totally stole this from her. All right, let's see what else do we need to do. I have a piece of designer series paper and I wanna do a banner in there. Now you can free freehand banners with your scissors, but some of us can't because we're very, very particular and we don't have a punch big enough. I think this is maybe one and a half. And so I just use the good old um, tailored tag punch or ta tailored, Taylor Tag Punch, I think that's its name. And so if you look right there, banner, use what you got, use what you got. So I'm gonna attach this to my card front, just so we got a little pop of that daffodil, that's daffodil designer series paper. Then ahead of time, I did a leaf stamped and cut that out in granny apple green. So let's add some pop dots to that one. And then I did things a little different with this ladybug. Don't let me forget, I wanna show you something with the Stamparatus before I, before I sign off. So or leaf there, ladybug is just punched. So I punched out her wings and punched out her body and then I only just stamped the dots. So that is a little bit different, not using the stamp set itself, but just using the punch. Add her there. Pop dots for her. And she's gonna hang out on this leaf, like a so. Oh, now I did forget to stamp my sentiment down there. We definitely wanna do that. Have your sentiment, if you wanna stamp a sentiment on the front. Um, or put it on with a, with a um, punch or something along those lines. But if you want to stamp it, stamp your sentiment before you do your embossing. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on the inside because I forgot to do it on the front. So for the inside, same deal. I have a white square and I'm gonna attach that to, it's the same size as what's gonna be on the front is gonna go on the inside and we'll put that on a layer of basic black. And I'm gonna stamp a flower inside there. And I'm gonna clean it real quick because I want a daffodil flower and we just did this in mango, which is a little bit too dark. So clean that off quick. And let's do that in yellow. Daffodil Delight, shall we? There we are. Big yellow flower inside. We'll attach this to the inside of our card. While we're at it, we are going to glue this mechanism right here, right? We need that glued shut. Now, I am using stamp and seal. If this doesn't hold, I'm, I will switch to uh, seal plus because you definitely want a good hold on that book binding because you want this is how your card's going to open it's just going to be a square so this can sit right down in here like that and now I want to decorate right here so I grabbed a piece of poppy designer series paper add that to a piece of basic black and that will just make that little binding pop a bit. There, see how that, that see how nice that is. Sorry, this still learning how to speak correctly. 
I'm sure my teeth will thank me once we're through this whole Invisalign process, but still in the meantime, it gets tricky. All right, one more punch ladybug because she is important for the inside so that our easel will actually be an easel. So this needs to tip up like this. So our little bug needs to hang out here like that to hold that in place or it won't stand up. So a couple of dimensionals on the back of her. You guys are loving this one. I think it's pretty cool too. So here she is. She's gonna sit right there on that little flower. Ta-da! Ain't that something, kids. Ain't that something. Now, while we're here, let's add some bling-a-bling. -bling. And then I wanna show you, whoops, there's a piece of fuzz on you. Um, I wanna show you something with the Stamparatus. So a couple little dimension or um, blings here. Now it would be cool, you could actually put those black dots on her shell, that would be cool. Okay, so there is our easel card. So then let's, while we have it, let's finish it off and just stamp our sentiment inside. Hello, hello bug. Okay, so easel card. Our peekaboo card and our mirror image card. So there we go. Those are our three projects. Now, let me grab that Stamparatus again because I want to show you how to make those ladybugs really dark, rich black. So, um, you guys will notice, and a lot of you guys who played bingo with us last weekend um, when we were stamping we noticed how uh, the memento is just not a real rich deep black it almost kind of comes out like a grayish so uh oh i need some new um my tape's tearing off so we're gonna put because the ladybug is a photopolymer we're gonna put that that squishy mat in there and then i just have a piece of just random I did have a piece, there we are, random cardstock. So we'll tighten that down there. And I need to find my ladybug. She was on a block, but we're gonna put her here and then attach her to our Stamparatus. So we can go ahead and ink her up with our memento. And I try to rejuice these and make them good and ready to go. Okay, so you can see how she's kind of grayish. She's just not real dark, dark black. So with the Stamparatus, we can ink her back up again as many times as we'd like and she will turn out darker every single time. So a huge thanks to Doreen. She was on bingo with us and she said that's what she did. And I'm like, what a great idea. So look, she got darker. Still not, not real solid, but let's do it one more try. And there we go. Look at the difference. The great thing about the Stamparatus is now you can knock how many of these out. You could just make a bunch of ladybugs um, and just a couple times, two or three times, you're good to go and you have nice, dark, rich, black uh, ladybug bodies. Okie dokie. So my friends, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget you guys can hop over to my online store and shop anytime 24 seven. This is the host code for February. And don't forget to follow my uh, Facebook page. That way when I go live, you guys will know what's going on. 
Oh, everybody's going home to get their, or come, going to get their Stamparatus out. I love it. I love it. All right, my friends. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful week and come on back next week for What's Up Wednesday. Bye, friends.